uh, now we would like to move on to Jao Garcia, who started his culinary journey as a stalwart figure in every place he has worked on. He named some as the shoe chef, chef of a, mis a Michelin star restaurant in Lisbon, the executive chef of La Cantine in UAE, and now the group head chef in Miras Holden, in charge of the growth of QSR concepts casual and premium restaurants, developing menus, implementation of standards, hire of chefs, procurements, mm -hmm. contracts, and relationship with the stakeholders. So we are truly blessed to be learning from you. And now I would like to pass on the mic. Awesome. Thank you so much to be part of the web seminar. And Karin, thank you so much for your words. It was amazing your representation. And it's always amazing to hear someone so passionate about food like you. Uh, I was really, really focused in each single word he was, uh, he was saying. Um, and to be honest, if I was a student now, I will apply straight away in the website to be a student. Um, but thank you so much for one more time to be part of the, the seminar. Just let me tell you, um, I'm not anymore uh, working for Miras. Now I'm the group head chef for the group who gets hospitality. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, around 12 outlets, doing the same job you described with. Uh, but I will start my presentation uh, because uh, I can I can introduce you better about myself. Um, let me let me just just facing a little bit of because I need to open my computer was denying the presentation i don't know why okay i think now i will be able to share let me let me know if you can, uh, you, can uh, you are presenting yeah. okay let's start the presentation for the presentation sometimes my knowledge on the computers I are really uh, in the bottom row I think it's there on the bottom so there is one uh, to increase the zoom yeah I think, that one, I think this one. Okay. Yeah. okay this is myself as I said I'm the group at uh, for Gates Hospitality uh, I've been working in the culinary uh, field for over 15 years. I've already been working in Portugal, I studied in the US, I studied in France, uh, in UAE. I'm already for eight years already, starting from uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, everything, catering. I did a little bit of everything until now. Uh, my presentation is focused on the mentalities of the new generation in the kitchen and how is affecting the market because it can be a little bit uh, uh, how i can say uh, can be a little bit crazy when i'm speaking about this subject uh, because i'm a little bit part of this new generation it's meaning i'm out of uh, but the new generation when they finish the culinary school all of them they come with the mentality i finished the culinary school i have enough knowledge to run a hotel to run a restaurant to be a executive chef, to be a head chef, and so on and so on. And uh, it's a sad story, but for the moment, we see a lot of uh, owners of restaurants and hotels employing uh, the students as the sous chefs, as the head chefs. And uh, the problem is not the moment. The moment, yeah, maybe they will be able to deliver what, uh, what they want. The problem is in the future, because the knowledge of the students as we know, is limited because they've been studying for two, three years in culinary school. They have the basic knowledge, but they, they are not able in case of problems to solve them. And this is where the problem starts because if I'm a chef, I need to start from the bottom. I need to learn. I need to, to receive shit from everybody. I need to do mistakes. I need to fix them. And um, 
only like that uh, I'm able uh, to reach the higher levels. If I leave the school and I go straight away as a head chef, uh, I don't have the knowledge of how to do it. I don't have the knowledge how to solve problems. Uh, I don't have the knowledge how to make the things perfect. And I don't have the knowledge how to teach the other ones. Okay. And when we speak about uh, organization charts, doesn't matter if it's a big or a small kitchen. In this case, uh, um, I put here the organization chart for the big organizations, hotels, or the big groups. All of these positions from the uh, training to the executive chef, as you can see, there's a lot, a lot of different positions. Each single position is very important inside of the kitchen. It starts from a training. Training is not the one we just received for a couple of months, and we just uh, uh, put them to do all the jobs we, want, we don't want to do, uh, or, uh, okay, is one more guy here, I just want to relax, and that's it. No, the training is someone uh, is with us for us to teach them. Is someone, uh, we're gonna, they're going to teach us something. It's crazy to say they don't teach us nothing. No, they teach us. I learn, even now, I learn with my committees, I learn with my stewards, because every single day we have something different. You know, they can teach us something different. And this is the most important. Uh, after moving to the committee, committee for me is one of the most important uh, positions inside of the kitchen, because they are doing the meticulous job. They are doing what uh, we're going to use after to, fi to finalize the plates. And if uh, the mistake starts from the bottom, when we reach to the top, uh, the finishing of a plate will be disaster. You know, and for me, each single position leads to the by step. You cannot jump positions. You need to have the proper knowledge of the committee, after to go for committee one, and so on, until you reach a sous chef position. When you reach a sous chef position, is the most uh, uh, not uh, sad position, but let's say it's the most ungrateful position. Why? Because it's the one listening all the complaints from the bottom, and is the one who is re uh, receiving uh, all the complaints from the executive chef of the head chef. And he needs to manage how to make both parties happy. And the sous chef is the one who starts to be ready to take the next level, and is the one with the full capacity to take decisions, last-minute decisions, how to organize the things at the last minute. It's very important, all of that uh, inside of the kitchen. Now, as Karine was saying about uh, uh, Escoffier, Escoffier was the one who came to, rev to, to change our mentalities about kitchens. Escoffier was the one uh, bringing what... Uh, not what we see now, but what we saw uh, until 15 years ago, where you had all the positions for every single part of the kitchen. Uh, and Scoffier, he delegate the jobs uh, as a proper uh, classes, let's say. He was having the sauciers, uh, he was having uh, uh, the butcheries, he was having uh, the grillers, he was having... Uh, uh, the the ones who was doing the sides and so on so on. Nowadays, because uh, uh, the the sad reality of our world, uh, a lot of uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, they start to cut in uh, in uh, in a brigade, and now instead to have people to to work in the positions before they were required, the positions before they were important to develop a great work. Uh, no, now, instead of a team of 20, they are hiring only seven. Because what they did, they are doing shortcuts. And that shortcuts, at the same time, they are cutting positions and they are cutting standards and they are cutting uh, the delivery of, uh, of a good service and a good meal. Um, and for me, looking back and looking to the, the new reality, I cannot say UAE. Uh, we, we still, with the old mentality of uh, what is a kitchen brigade, we still have a lot of uh, chefs working to deliver good quality of products. Uh, re I believe UAE is maybe one of the only countries in the world uh, still uh, guiding themselves as uh, 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 old Scofia brigades. Um, 
how we can uh, how we can uh, see how it's affecting our reality. More shortcuts, it's meaning uh, instead, uh, uh, for example, to do a sauce where it takes uh, one hour or two hours, what they do, they put fire in the maximum to reduce the things. And after instead to have the nice flavor of a sauce, uh, what's going to happen because it's boiling, 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 and it's burning all around it, the sauce will reduce. Uh, but when the sauce reduces, having a burnt flavor. And nowadays we see this one in a lot of places using shortcuts. Another one is taking the technique and the knowledge of our staff uh, is the pre-ready cuts or the food pre-prepared. Uh, uh, for example, a lot of places because kitchens are small or because they don't want to spend that much money, what they do, they approach big organizations and say, okay, I don't have uh, uh, time and money to have, um, I don't know, maybe strip line 300 grams cut. Uh, can you do it for me? And of course they do it, uh, or a uh, Julian, or a Bonoise, uh, or uh, all the cuts we are used to do. All these companies, they are delivering already all these products already cut. What's going to happen? The chefs, the new generation of chefs, they will not even know the name of the cut. They will not know how to do it. They will not know what to do with the trimmings of the products. And at the end of the day, instead of to have chefs with the culture, instead to have chefs uh, ready to run uh, big organizations, mission star organizations, and so on, so on, we have chefs end up working in the medium uh, restaurants because they don't know what to do. If they are going for a mission star restaurant, they are lost and they need to quit because they don't know. Okay? And this is a big problem of the knowledge of the, the new generation nowadays. Uh, they want to reach the top first because they want to make money, because they want to, uh, to do what the executive chefs are doing. And they are jumping. They are jumping. But the knowledge is not, is not jumping. The knowledge is still the same. The knowledge is still the same. And they will not be able to deliver good results. And after the, one of the big, big problems in this uh, uh, hospitality industry are the managers. The managers, they are more worried about their own image than the image of the restaurant, than the image of the food and the service delivered to the final customer. They want to, to see themselves in the nice pictures on the magazines, on the newspapers, social media. They want to use the best suit, the best jacket. And in the end, the service and the standards are affected because the restaurant or the hotel is not about themselves. It's about the team. The team needs to run all from one side. And this is the problem. Uh, the standards of the deliveries will decrease in a big time because uh, after nobody will care about uh, how a dish is going out. For example, one of the best examples is the filet mignon, the Wellington. The Wellington needs to be prepared in a certain way to be delivered with juicy to have the puff pastry, uh, crispy. And nowadays, they just, they just do, they don't even know the ingredients. They just see nice pictures on Instagram. They try to mix ingredients and that's it. They don't know the steps, the proper steps. The food quality will drop because what they are worried, they are worried about the food cost. And for them, the food cost is buying cheap food and to buy cheap food does it mean the food costs are reducing. Yes, on the reality, the food cost will reduce because you are buying cheap products, but from another side, you reduce the quality, the clients will understand, it, will affect, it, and they will not come back. They will come one time, they will pay, I don't know, $20, $30, but the next time they will not come back again. And because of that, your food cost factor goes up. This is like a normal math, one plus one. If you have good products, you're going to have clients. And if you're going to have clients, your food cost will go. You have cheap products, you don't have clients, your food cost is going to go up. And this is what the people still uh, don't think is, is true. They're still thinking, no, I buy cheap products and I will have always clients because I'm the best, because I know how to do everything. Well, and in a part, the problem is in the schools. Karim, don't take me wrong. It's not about you. I'm speaking about in general, and believe in me, in Portugal, from where I am, I saw a lot of times this happening. The teachers, 
and they don't have any more methods of cooking, they don't have any more methods of work, uh, they don't have uh, the professionalism, they are not any more meticulous to the, to the delivering of the, 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 the food of the products. And uh, they, they are there because the, the, the working hours is reduced, comparing of a hotel or a restaurant, they are there because the salaries are okay, but after, who's going to be affected? It's our industry. Our industry will suffer now, in 10 years' time, in 20 years' time, and continuing so on, so on, if nobody decides to change. The students, when they are in the school, they have as well the wrong perspective of what is a kitchen, because for them, when they are in the school, they teach them uh, a kitchen is having this many hours of working, is a big brigade, everything, everything is amazing. Uh, in the reality, uh, me, Karen, and thousands, billions of other chefs, we know is not. Our industry is hard. Our industry is not fair with us. Our industry is beautiful because we can see the, the smiles on the face of the customers, and this is what makes us happy. But it's not easy. It's not an easy industry. It's an industry requires passion. It's an industry requires time. It's an industry sometimes our family stays on the second uh, uh, position. Um, but yeah, if it's what we choose, uh, is what we need to handle. Uh, the working hours are 8, 10, 12. Uh, even myself, I already did more than 24 hours working because we was having uh, a service to be delivered. I remember a few, a few years back uh, when we won the Michelin star, we was having um, in Lisbon uh, the Halle Chateau coming over. And it uh, was Halle Chateau plus the consecration of uh, uh, my chef at that time. Uh, and was 200 people for... Uh... I think he muted himself. Um, yeah, he did. Joe, you muted yourself. I don't think he can hear us. Wait. I'll ask someone to text him. We're trying to figure this out, but <laughs> Joe is not responding to. He can't hear us, can he? Uh, Joe. Uh, sorry guys, I had a problem with my microphones, they just uh, went down, I don't know why. Uh, well, but continue what I was, um, what I was saying. Um, uh, Joe, 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 uh, could you actually go uh, back? We need to keep the, the wrong rules, uh, the strong no, rules. No, uh, we mean? cannot uh, take Is shortcuts, it? we cannot uh, uh, keep thinking uh, uh, we will reach the target, uh, just, uh, just avoiding uh, 
the the tough jobs and sometimes boring jobs like uh, uh, peeling uh, uh, carrots or uh, trimming uh, uh, meats or trimming fishes. Yeah, we need to do it. If the student doesn't like it, okay, my friend, or you change or you go. And it needs to be like full times like this. I remember in my school, if someone was not happy with uh, what the professor was doing, okay, my friend, you can go. Uh, this is the rule inside of this uh, this culinary school. Uh, um, and that's it. I remember in US, I was studying in um, Culinary Institute of America, um, that our teacher, he'd been very clear with, uh, with the executive chef from the army, and he said, I understand you are the executive chef for the army, I understand you are already almost 50, but if you don't do the way I want, I don't want you to, be, to have you here. You can go. You can continue your job. I'm here to teach you, and I'm here to, to teach the best way I can. Well, and to be honest, he did well. Uh, from where to start? We need to listen. We need to listen when we start the, uh, the culinary uh, journey. We need to listen our superiors. We need to listen our chefs. We need to listen our chef, the party. We need to keep quiet. Keep quiet is not... Uh, if they are treating us bad, we're going to... We're gonna, um, we're going to listen and we're going to uh, respect. No. We keep quiet, listen carefully what he's saying to us, and put in practice. Respect is the most important inside of one kitchen. We need to respect everybody. doesn't matter if he's a steward, if he's your chef. Everybody needs to be treated as a person. We cannot treat the other ones as a, uh, as a minor or as a lower position. You know, Everybody needs to have respect in my kitchens i don't allow nobody to disrespect nobody doesn't matter if he's a steward or my sous chef for me all of them they have the same value we need to do a lot of mistakes but when i say mistakes is a healthy ones healthy ones what i mean with the healthy ones is um, our mistakes cannot uh, warm the business our mistakes is for example i want to take a fillet of a fish of a big fish the first time Maybe I will take a piece of uh, the meat from the flesh of the fish, but next time I will do it better. This is a healthy ones. This is the healthy mistakes going to make us grow. Uh, and we need to fix them. To fix them, if we need help from someone, we need to call. And we need to ask, listen, uh, I want to do this, but I already did a mistake. Can you please teach me how to do it? We need to listen and we need to look careful to don't do it again. This is the most important thing in one kitchen. We need to listen. We need to create a, a, a open communication from the top to the bottom. The kitchen, yes, during the service time, needs to be on silence to listen the orders of the chef. But the communication is a key point inside of one kitchen. If you no know communication, everything goes wrong. This is the presentation from my side. Uh, I really, uh, I really believe, uh, um, I really believe uh, if uh, the kitchens go back to the old times, everything will be better. The Michelin star restaurants, they are keeping winning stars. Why? It's not because they take shortcuts. It's not because uh, they, um, they are lazy. It's because they are keeping strong rules. It's because they are keeping uh, the key people there to teach the other ones, and the other ones, they have the chance to grow inside of the organization. And this is the most important. And until we, when I say we, all uh, the management side still with the idea, uh, okay, this one is a cheap labor, let me take on board, I will teach him in the will delivery, we will never go there. We need to be strong. We cannot think uh, this is a cheap labor. We will take it, and later on, well, let's see what's going to be. No, it cannot be. We need to get the correct people in the correct positions. If it's a cheap labor, we need to understand uh, why it's cheap. Maybe we have a different position for him. That position, maybe after a few months, after a few years, 
he will grow with us, but we need to understand that cheap labor will not replace uh, a chef de party, for example. A good chef de party is not a number, is not an amount, uh, you know, is the knowledge. And the knowledge is not uh, cheap. You, sorry for the expression, is you, you pay uh, two monkeys, you have a, you have a bad service, you know. Um, but this is, the, this is the point. If you pay, you have Michelin star restaurants. If you don't pay, you have restaurants after six months, one year, they're going to close. All right. Uh, I'm going to give an example. Uh, everybody knows, and it's easier. We, we had the, the kitchen nightmare from Gordon Hamsi. And we were seeing what was happening around the world. The people they were hiring, cheap people to operate the restaurants, what's going to happen? In a few months' time, the restaurant was closing, or the business from here was dropping to the almost zeros. You know, why, why I still believe and why my organizations, they still doing well, thanks God, I cannot, uh, I cannot complain, because I fight to have the correct people in the business. I fight to have them every single day going for trainings, um, learning from other chefs inside of other organizations, doing cross trainings be between organizations. And sometimes a few, a few chefs um, are like, I'm the best one. And I don't care about the other ones. All the other ones are wrong. All the other ones, they do mistakes. No. Myself, with the position I have now, I go inside of my kitchens and I work. I'm going to open now six new restaurants. One of them is an Indian restaurant. I don't know how to do non breads, for example. I already told them I want to go one week inside of the kitchen to make non bread. You know, because I'm, in the end of the day, I'm a chef. I want to learn. I want to, to, to develop a good service. Um, and I believe if everybody starts to change the mentality and if everybody starts to, uh, to go for this line, uh, all of us as a whole industry, we will change. And after we're going to start to complain, we are working a lot of hours. Maybe after we're going to reduce the amount of hours we are working because our delivery is higher than before. And maybe because we do a long hours is because we don't have the correct people in the operation. That is the thing. Guys, thank you so much for this presentation. Sorry for my uh, headphones to lose the battery. Well, <laughs> I don't know why. Could connect the dots when you started speaking again. We really did use you for like three minutes. Thank you so much for illustrating.